Hi, good evening. Welcome to Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Farrah Lewis, and we are here with a phenomenal author by the name of Kayshawn Cooper and his newly released book, The Champion Father. We'll be back with Kayshawn Cooper. Hi, welcome back to Beyond Focus TV, and we are here with author, motivational speaker, <laughs> <laughs> jack of all trades, Kayshawn Cooper. How are you? How are you doing? It's great to be here. It's great to have you. So our audience doesn't really know who you are, so tell us who is Kayshawn Cooper? Well, I'm glad you said author and motivational speaker. Yes, that's what I do, but um, first and foremost, I am a father and I am a husband. Mm -hmm. Uh, going on 10 years of marriage. If you, I'm pretty sure you probably can see the little gray hairs right there. <laughs> <laughs> and having uh, five children, it would wow. do it, it would it would do it to you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I am a motivational speaker. I really don't like to call myself a motivational speaker. I really like to say that um, you know I like to have a conversation where both parties leave empowered. Okay. Um, uh, but I am an author. I will say that. I will say I am an author. This is my second book. Um, this is my second book within 365 days. Uh, let me just add. Uh, so that's, that's progressive. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So what's the name of your first book? First book is uh, What If I Am uh, the Four Stages in Life. What If I Am the Four Stages in Life, and then which that book led me to writing uh, the, Champion the Champion Father. Father. Okay. Absolutely. So tell us who is identify yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, getting back to that part, um, I am a person who loves people. I love uh, I love to see people happy. It took me a long time to get there because myself I, I was a very very unhappy uh, person due to the uh, situations situations and circumstances that I experienced in my childhood. And, uh, and but once I once I shed once I got rid of and eradicated those, those, those negative emotions and feelings, I, I guess I was introduced to the Kayshawn that you see here today. And, and I know how great it feels when I wake up every morning. You know, you know, some people, they just hate what's going on in their lives. And, and don't get me wrong, I do have some bad days. But all in all, I really love life. And if I, if I like this feeling, my job as a human being, my obligation is to make sure and do my part that everybody could experience the same feeling of happiness. So we read in your bio that you grew up without your father at some point. So talk to us about that experience. Well, the fall of the fall of 1986 was a very, very interesting, interesting uh, time for me. Uh, mm -hmm. That led me to where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. um, fall of '86. I never forget downtown Brooklyn. Okay. Uh, we were in a courtroom. And uh, we left, I, I don't know how it, it worked, but I know they asked us to, they excused us from the courtroom, mm -hmm. and they brought us back in. And when they this brought us back- This is you and your family. Asked, uh, correct. Uh, mm -hmm. They asked my mother and I to leave. I believe my sister was there, I believe. Um, they asked us, they excused us from the courtroom, and then mm -hmm. they, they invited us back in. And then when they brought us back in, I never forget the look on my mother's face. It was, you know, a, a hard look. She was just crying, and she wouldn't stop crying. I'm mm -hmm. like, why, why is this woman crying? I'm six years old now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I step around, uh, the, you know, the dividers that, that divide the courtroom, my father arms behind his back and I see two officers on each side and long behold, it was something that really changed my life forever. My father was in handcuffs. Mm -hmm. um, it was that event, that picture that really, really, uh, really, it really scarred me, let me say. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was the words that he spoke after that that really, really placed a huge mandate on my life. Okay. Um, he looked in my eyes, and I was six years old, so I had to be probably about three foot six. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked me in my eyes and he said, Kayshawn, uh, daddy isn't coming home anytime soon. You are now the man of the house. Your job is to protect your mother, protect the house, and protect your sister. What did that do to you when you heard that? Uh, then I just broke down in tears. You know. Okay. I, 
I didn't looking back. I didn't realize the responsibility that he placed on me. Then Who's to a, a, absolutely to protect my my mother. You know that's a given. Mm -hmm. But to protect the house at six years old when I'm still watching Hulk Hogan and still you know going to the bathroom in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know doing things that six year olds do. Mm -hmm. But he placed that mandate on me because he wasn't coming home anytime soon. It really hurt me, and I never forget my, my big brother, my good friend, my mentor, Lance Heisman. He took me in. My father got locked up at the age, when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. I met Lance at seven, and I never forget, uh, we was at a particular church uh, here in Brooklyn, and, and uh, you know, he introduced himself to me, and mm -hmm. I told him my story, and from that moment on, from seven years old up until 30, he's still in my life. But I remember wow. uh, sitting in his, in his house and I just kept crying saying I just want my daddy Aww. I just want my daddy I just want my daddy mm -hmm. so um, it really it really did a lot to me emotionally mm -hmm. uh, psychologically it, uh, you know it, socially it really did a lot it affected me in such a way and I brought the I brought those effects in my marriage mm -hmm. the way I deal with my children the way I deal with people in general it really not having my dad there really um, put me at a disadvantage mm -hmm. So what has that, how has that experience changed you as a man, who you are today? <sighs> the hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a saying that hurt people hurt, hurt people. people. Yeah. And the other side of the spectrum is help people help people. Mm -hmm. uh, once you get past the hurt, um, now that's where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. I'm at the stage of helping people because I've been helped. Mm -hmm. um, that as a parent, it really, two things happen to a father, uh, to a man once his father isn't in the picture, if his father isn't in the picture. Mm -hmm. Either he will repeat the pattern and become inactive or become absent, or like myself, he, he will overcompensate yeah. as a father. For what he, for what Absolutely, for yeah. what he was lacking, mm -hmm. he will overcompensate. And, and this, is, this is across the border. You can talk to any father, it doesn't matter nationality, it doesn't matter even in the where in the world. If a father was absent, two things would happen. He would either repeat the pattern or overcompensate. And that's what wow. I've done. I have overcompensated. I mean, I must tell my kids I love them so much. Uh, my Kayshawn Jr., he said, Daddy, I just wish you stopped telling me <laughs> you love me. I said, but guess what? Those are the words that I do not want you to forget. Because yes. it took, it took, I was 28. Mm -hmm. That was the first time my father ever told me he loved me. That was two so, years ago. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So the first 28 years of my life, as far as I can remember, mm -hmm. my father was gone for about six and a half years mm -hmm. um, when he was incarcerated. But as far as I can remember, as an adult, my father never expressed those three words, I love you. And um, I knew, and that in itself, those three words done right, said right, it has such an enormous impact mm -hmm. on an individual. Mm -hmm. And I was lacking that to hear, I love you, Kayshawn, you know, I was lacking that. So I knew that at 20, at 28 years old, I did not want to go into a new year. And I called my father and I said, uh, and it was a long conversation. I'm normally, I can get straight to the point, mm -hmm. but I did not know how to express to my father, hey man, you never told me you love me. And once I finally, it took me 30 minutes to just mm -hmm. say that, but once I finally got to that point, he said, Kayshawn, I've always loved you. Once he said that, I felt like a little kid again. I felt like a little Back boy. I did, I did, I did. So we're going to take a quick break and come back and talk about how that actual experience led you to the champion fight. Absolutely. We'll be back. Welcome back to Beyond Focus TV. We're here with author Kayshawn Cooper, and you were explaining to us that moment in time when your father told you he loved you for the first time. You see, I'm, I'm over here, you know, lost for words. Yeah, lost for words. Um, because I'm so used to, well, at that point, I was so used to giving, giving love, giving love to my kids. And, um, you know, for the record, 
um, to all your viewers, at one point, I even envied my children because I wanted to feel the same love they felt. Never you know, I, I, you know, I've never, you know, you know, to hold my, to hold yes. my babies, and to hug them and embrace them. That's something that I've lacked. Mm -hmm. So you know, and I would tell them, I said, man, you know, y'all guys are really lucky. Y'all, y'all are really lucky. Really I said, I, I said, I wish I had a father in my life like y'all. I, I, I really did. Um, but to hear those words, Kayshawn, I love you. I retorted back to being the same six-year-old boy. When he left me, yeah, uh, that day in that courtroom. Yep, yep, that day in that courtroom. I, 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 that's that's where it picked back up. I was like, wow, man, this 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 is what it feels like. Mm -hmm. This 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 is the way it sounds coming from a parent. He told me in that conversation. He said, Kayshawn, I I've always loved you. He said, you always be my baby. Um, but I've I only did what I knew to do. Mm -hmm. And that right there was so interesting when he said that. He said, I only did what my father showed me. Wow. So now, in hindsight and with a level of maturity, mm -hmm. my father did his best as a father. As of what he knew how Absolutely, to do. because you can only teach what, what you, you know. know. Yeah. You can't teach no more than that. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, I'm not justifying it, but it, it makes sense. Yeah looking back that you can only teach what you know and he did his best whatever you know you can never become more than what you're exposed to mm -hmm. and that's what it was well so you're at that point where now you're a grown man you're married you have kids lots of them lots of them <laughs> five of them and now we're here where you wrote a book called the champion father what led to this project what led you to this point where you got to write this book? Well, let me tell you something. I almost didn't write that book. Uh, the really? Reason, yeah, the reason for that is uh, my big brother, Lance, mm -hmm. he said, Keisha, your next book should be about fatherhood. Mm -hmm. And I immediately dismissed him. I said, no. First of all, to write the first book, it, I, you know, I thank God for my family. Because yeah. when I go into <laughs> writing mode, you know, I, I, I shut down. You yeah. know, I, don't, I don't hear nothing. I don't see nothing. So the, the process that it took to write the first book it was tedious, mm -hmm. but now you're talking about a second book. You didn't want to go back no, to that place. No, I didn't. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that. But um, and then he said, your next book should be about fatherhood. Mm -hmm. So immediately, I associate fatherhood or parenting books mm -hmm. with the how to, you know, put your kids to bed at by nine and, mm -hmm. and do all these different things that really bore me half to death. Yeah. So I said, <laughs> no, I'm not going through all of that. But uh, a good friend of mine from Australia, he contacted me via Facebook. He said, Mr. Cooper, your next book should be on fatherhood. fatherhood. I said, okay. Confirmation. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I said, okay, let me figure out what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a nonprofit, Father's Rock, mm -hmm. has been around for four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, Farrah, the conversations that I have with men all over the world is fascinating. And, That's a world, world ride absolutely, uh, organization. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Um, uh, our, our mission and our initiative is to support fathers. You know, we want to strengthen the community. How do we strengthen the community? It's great mm -hmm. that we have organizations for mothers. You know, I really, really appreciate organizations for women and mothers, and I definitely appreciate organizations for children. Mm -hmm. I mean, our children are our future. Yeah. However, it is impossible to have a healthy community without a healthy man, without a healthy father. So that's what Fathers Rock uh, mission is and an initiative is to strengthen the man mm -hmm. by using a positive seed planting philosophy okay. um, to, you know, to, uh, to, to, to work on the self-development, to work mm -hmm. on the inward because the way how the inward look and how the inward feel the outward. That's our group, absolutely, anyway. absolutely. Okay. So, um, you know, talking to men all over the world and listen to their stories why they do what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, some men travel across the world to see their children. They will leave everything behind. They would, um, you know, they would take on children of other women. You know, they date mm -hmm. the woman, they fall in love with the woman, and then they fall, fall in love with the child. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, these stories are so phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I ask my question, I ask myself this question, why are you doing this? That's mm -hmm. what I ask my, you know, Keishon, why are these fathers doing this? Yeah. What is it? What is it that can be so powerful that will cause a man to father another child? Mm -hmm. You know, we call it father by choice, not by blood. Yeah. You know, wh why? Why would, why, would, why would a father 
um, a work three and four jobs, you know, or sprain his ankle and still go to work and still mm -hmm. take his kids to the park. What is it that can be so strong? And after talking to fathers all over the world, Farah, it's very simple. The one ingredient, which is powerful, though invisible, mm -hmm. is forces are mighty. It's love. Yes. It's love. Something very, 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 very simple, very simple, mm -hmm. yet powerful. Yes. And that's what the champion father is. Mm -hmm. The champion father is a great story about love. Mm -hmm. it, you get to see the, em, the embodiment of a champion father through love. You know, love is the umbrella mm -hmm. of why, you know, love is the umbrella and why he does what he do uh, falls under the umbrella of love mm -hmm. through the struggling, through the sacrificing, through uh, working out and having and maintaining a healthy relationship with the child's mother, which is really, really big, mm -hmm. through um, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, mental and physical. And it, those things really, really intrigued me, and that's what led me to write in The Champion Father. Okay. Because in order to become a champion, you must confront, not run away from your challenges. I like that. I like that. So, Kashawn, I want to... I want to find out from you what a champion father actually looks like. But before you answer, we're going to go to a quick break and come right back with Kayshawn Cooper. Welcome back to Beyond Focus TV. So, Kashan, what does a champion father look like? Well, <clears throat> the champion father has many different faces. Mm -hmm. um, there is, you, you can't really place your thumb on the champion father. Mm -hmm. um, you know how you say success is a uh, success is a journey, not a destination. Yes. Uh, I, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The champion father is the same way. He's ever evolving. He doesn't. He, he's always becoming. Mm -hmm. So, the champion father. Under, under the umbrella of love mm -hmm. is ever catering himself to the situation. Mm -hmm. um, so the champion father, he, he only sees through one lens, and that's the lens of love. Okay. He treats everyone. It doesn't matter if he knows them or not as a champion father. Okay. Because he knows in return, eventually, over time, he will become or treated, excuse me, he will be treated like a champion. Mm -hmm. um, so the champion father is always thinking, you know, it's easy for us to think in hindsight, mm -hmm. but the champion father is always thinking with the future in mind, mm -hmm. knowing that the flowers, the flowers we see today are from the seeds from yesterday, mm -hmm. and the flowers that we see tomorrow are from the seeds that the champion father sowed mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So he's always keeping his mind, uh, you know, he, he lives in the present while keeping a close eye on the future. So in this book, there are several, and then you say, the champion father has lots of faces, lots of different types of men. So you have a lot of stories in here from different men and different situations. So which one struck out to you the most? Well, you know, they all were, all were phenomenal, mm -hmm. all were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, let me just say that each interview, you know how we say, you know, men don't cry, mm -hmm. start talking about his children. Let a father start talking oh. about his child, his children, or his family. You will, I mean, you can hear it, you know, they start yeah. crying. I mean, it, 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 it was just phenomenal. I'm like, wow, these men are, you know, like, excuse me, Mr. Cooper, let me, you know, let me get myself together. So uh, each story was phenomenal, but one of my favorite stories, because I can relate to this, um, Cliff. Cliff yes. is a story, and I love that story. And, you know, Cliff talked about how he did not feel like a champion father. The time he did not feel like a champion father was the time he could not provide financially mm -hmm. for his family. And mm -hmm. you know what, Farah? That is probably the biggest, um, the biggest roadblock and obstacle for a man and a father to get mm -hmm. over is his inability to provide for his family. Mm -hmm. And Cliff said, you know, he felt depressed. He wouldn't do anything. He was just laying on the couch. And he thought about taking his life. Yes. 
it, 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 you know, he was done. He was ready to throw in the towel mm -hmm. on his life. But he said he looked at his daughter mm -hmm. and he said his daughter looked back at him and he said, Kayshawn, my daughter didn't see any of the things that I saw. My, my daughter didn't see me not having the uh, ability to provide for her and her brother and our, our family. The only thing she saw was daddy. Yes. And he said at that moment, he, he, jumped off, off, he jumped off the couch and said, you know what? It's time for me to get back on track. Mm -hmm. He said, I have no super... No superpowers, mm -hmm. but to my daughter and to my son, I am their superhero. So how do you go from an ordinary father to a champion father? Well, <clears throat> really quickly, okay. if, if I may. Yeah, you uh, can. Three, three quick tips, three quick strategies that any father right now, and it doesn't matter what 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 stage in the cultivation process you mm -hmm. know you have new fathers active fathers inactive fathers seasoned fathers mm -hmm. so you can utilize these strips uh, these these tips, three tips? right okay. these tips and strategies to you know to grow to grow as a father because like i said the champion father is ever evolving mm -hmm. ever growing ever changing so the first thing one of uh, the first thing is focus on your child's future mm -hmm. focus on your child's future and it reminds me of a story daniel go lightly this is one of my favorite stories <laughs> again in, in the book mm -hmm. uh, daniel lived in kentucky his mm -hmm. daughter lived in fort lauderdale daniel bought three round tip tri uh, round tip round trip tickets, tickets so he could go see his absolutely kids. flying right yeah. uh, so he could see his daughter mm -hmm. he said you know what Keyshawn? enough is enough he said Fair. He walked away from everything. He left everything behind. He moved to Fort Lauderdale without a job. Nothing. Without, nothing. Just to be near his child. Just to be near his daughter. He had mm -hmm. a place to stay. Um, he stayed with a friend. Mm -hmm. He said he slept on. He slept on the floor. I remember that. He went days without eating. And he slept on his luggage. But he mm -hmm. said, Keyshawn, the, the smile on my daughter's face when I told her I wasn't going back and I live here, he said, it's priceless. Mm -hmm. You see, that's focusing on your child's future, mm -hmm. where the future is so much greater. I say that your present struggle is worth your future dream. Mm -hmm. So focus on your child's future. The next thing is champion fathers create champion children. Mm -hmm. your, presence, your presence as a father create an endless present mm -hmm. for your child and it reminds me of one of the many phenomenal and compelling stories in the book kai morgan mm -hmm. and I, i'm not i'm not even really going to talk about his story i want the the viewers to really you know to get the book and and read his story but you know kai had a situation that happened in his life and um it, it, it's not the idea it wasn't the most ideal situation yeah. to find yourself in as a married man yeah and you know certain things happen and uh kai he couldn't see his daughter like the way he wanted to and he said it really hurt him to his core but he said again like daniel he said kishan enough is enough this is amazing how powerful love is mm -hmm. well he said you know enough is enough he said i had to let it be known that this daughter that this young lady is my daughter yes he risked everything he put everything on the line to create an everlasting presence for his daughter mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he knew that his presence ultimately creates a present um, and then the last one is the most it doesn't matter let me say it this way focusing on your child's future mm -hmm. is phenomenal um, your presence create a present mm -hmm. is awesome as well mm -hmm. but the last one the last tip maintain a healthy relationship with the child's mother mm -hmm. that is epic that is the end all be, be all <laughs> absolutely if you cannot for any reason get to level three or or, or, or work on level three mm -hmm. everything that you do is for no reason wow it, it really it really i mean that's not a champion father a champion father uh because i know every family dynamic is different mm -hmm. but an ordinary father will run you know i don't want to be bothered with her I, you know, just you know, just various reasons he just don't want to be bothered. So, with that being said, the champion father he understands he grows from his struggles. He grows from his obstacles. He, he grows from his obstacles. So, he is willing to do what he has to do for his children. That's why he focuses on their future. Mm -hmm. He know that his present create a present, mm -hmm. and that in order to become the true world class champion father, he maintains and creates a healthy relationship with the mother. Hey, Sean, this book is for everybody. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. Tell us where we can find you so that we can go out and get this book and learn how to become champion. Okay, well, you can visit our website. Uh, the website is www. 
championfather.net. That's www.championfather.net. And also, I invite you, we invite you to join the four, almost 45,000 supporters of Father's Rock on Facebook. Uh, that's, that, that is Father's Rock on Facebook. And also, you can email me at kshawn.cooper at gmail.com kshawn.cooper at gmail.com thank you thank you thank you so much for coming out and f speaking to us about the champion father and we cannot wait to see what happens next with you it's great having thank you on our so show thank you so much it was a pleasure all right so thank you for joining us on beyond focus tv this evening and have a great night <laughs>